You're listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Go Tigers! Go Tigers! Go Tigers! Go Tigers! Go Tigers! You're now listening to Tough. Tiger Talk with Big Q and the guys on the Pro Media Network. What's going on, fam? Now tuned in to Tough Tiger Talk on the PRO Media Network, man. We're chiming in with the latest news and notes. From the national champion, LSU Tigers. That's right, I said it, baby. Got a great sound to it, don't it? The national champion, LSU Tigers, man. I love that. Love how that sounds, man. It's going down. Anyway, we'd like to welcome y'all to Tough Tiger Talk, the realest show. On the web about all things LSU football man and we here we're gonna talk about a lot of news man and lsu man goodness most active team in college football in the off season started off man we're gonna talk about it on T- uh, tough tiger talk big ups to all the people tuning in today on tough tiger talk please if you like the show please f- feel free to subscribe share and like and share on other tiger purple and gold fan base sites as well feel free to share the show as well in this episode we're going to talk about coach on his contract extension and other several other really interesting news articles dealing with the tigers all that all that i can say is man when you win a national championship i mean what you what do you expect to happen after that seriously people come in they just pick your damn team apart of course you're going to lose a certain amount of people to the nfl a lot of change most certainly a lot of change in uh, Baton Rouge, but still in all, this is a national championship team and we expected as much. So it's just truly awesome, man. Anyway, I'm Big Q, your host on Tough Tiger Talk, and I'll be leading you through this great journey as we moving forward. And man, what a what an excellent week of uh, exciting week here. We're going to start it off by talking about Coach O's mega deal because you you can't talk, <laughs> talk Tigers without Coach O and Coach O was extended out and I knew it was come sooner or later which Coach O'Geron's contract situation that that eventually they would have extended him out after a great performance that he turned in and man I mean six years 42 million dollars for Coach O and man I can't say it no, no, no better man Coach O deserved this man and this is the great part about it Tough Tiger Talk family Coach O did this on his his own. This wasn't Les Miles' team. Les Miles left him with nothing. He had to recruit and bring this team here and, and assemble this team on his own. That's what Coach O did. He, this is his team. He recruited. He put this team together. He won the Eddie Robinson Coach of the Year Award in New Orleans this weekend before the national championship. He won several awards for his great performance as a head coach. And he's now the fifth highest paid coach in college football prior to that. He was a the steal of a lifetime for LSU, but they've given him a six a six year deal worth forty two million dollars. So big ups to Coach O, man, in a major capacity. Much earned well a lot of love for Coach O. Now he's the fifth highest paid coach in college football in his second contract extension in the past year. First include bonus incentives that essentially asked Ogeron to prove himself. Well, he maxed out all those incentives, which were one point, just shy of $2 million, which included the LSU win over Clemson. And this is definitely well-deserved, as athletic director Mr. Scott Woodard said in the press release that Coach O much deserved. I mean, he ascended. He ascended all of the naysayers and people that thought that Coach O could not bring a national championship to the state of Louisiana, guess what? Coach o, Coach o is a national champion. And notice the coach's demeanor too. When he watched Joey Burrow lift that title, I got the, if you can look right at the uh, the thumbnail there, you can see him 
very proud of Joe Burrow, but reserved too, knowing that yes, this is where we wanted to be. We got there proud, but yet understanding that this is the first of many. And you can see Coach O looking and enjoying the moment while just looking out into his mind and saying, well, this is the first of many. We're going to keep it going. So, man, six years, $42 million for Coach O. Puts him up there with some of the highest paid in college right now and actually makes him the fifth highest paid for those who won't know. So, man, that's just a strong indication of what kind of a person Coach O was. Like I said, this was his team. He built this team from the bottom to the top, and he got a massive, a massive contract extension for six years. And dare I say that Coach O is definitely, most certainly, definitely looking at building a dynasty. In order to do that, he's going to have to fill some coaching vacancies uh, with the, with LSU, and that's a portion of it because. During this week, with Coach O's massive contract extension, he's lost several assistants. Of course, we know about Brady, I mean, Joe Brady, that ultimately ended up leave, left leaving to the Carolina Panthers and taking an offensive coordinator position. And then, of course, you thought to yourself, well, that's fine. Uh, what we do is we'll use, uh, you know, we'll probably use uh, Mun- uh, Munez as the assistant that my, many people thought, but guess what? That wasn't the case. He ended up leaving and taking the job with Dave Aranda, who was the defensive coordinator for LSU, who ultimately took the move to go to Baylor. So it's a weird triangle that happened here. As Mike Rule took the Carolina Panthers job in the NFL, he pulls Joe Brady from the Tiger Nation. You're thinking Munez would be the guy that steps up and replaces him, which was the thought process that me and other Tiger faithful were thinking. Ultimately, that did not occur because once Rule left, he left a vacancy in Baylor in which Dave Aranda took. Dave Aranda then pulled Munez from Coach O to work in a similar capacity. I don't know if it's offensive coordinator. Now, I would think it was coordinator or a similar post in Texas. So it's very, very interesting to see, to say nothing least, how a lot of the assistants are being stripped away. And then, of course, uh, we lost another coordinator to to the Baylor team as Dave Aranda continues to try to even pull recruits away from uh, Coach O. So it gets down and dirty once <laughs> once the once the lines have crossed and once other players become uh, coaches become coaches, it gets downright down and dirty with it. But I mean, it's just put more of the same. This is what you expect if you are a national champion. You expect guys uh, to ultimately. Um, leave when you leave when you leave and go somewhere else uh, you expecting those guys to ultimately say you know what um, they're going to pick away my, they're going to take our players and all this kind of stuff and that's what happens ask Nick Saban every goddamn year he had to deal with with national championships of people coming to take away talented coaches and assistants and, and, and the likes well you see even Harry here is Dave Aranda's is trying to flip LSU's five star recruit uh, that came out the other day is that they're trying to get him to come over to Baylor. And who's the five-star recruit? Of course, it is LSU commit Rajon Davis from Santa Ana, California, one of the most talented players on the West Coast who's an instant impact at the next level. And, of course, Dave Aranda says, hey, man, I know you wanted to play at LSU, but you can come play with us. And like I said, he's pulling a lot of stuff, man. He's pulling a lot of stuff. And... uh it's on his Twitter page says he's streaming out to receive an offer from Baylor University. And that's 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 Dave Aranda trying to pull uh him away from a top a top recruit, five star recruit away from Coach O. So how about that? It gets downright dirty, baby. <laughs> it gets downright dirty. I'll tell you what, but man, that's such such is life. So also the defensive line coach for LSU was also flipped and ended up going to Baylor as well. So Coach O has his hand. Now he got his he has his contract extension. Now Coach O has a settle in and he did several things in terms of going out and speaking to every everybody from Arch Man and checking on them and lining up recruits for now and two or three for several years into the future. But the team is it's just a lot of stuff that they're dealing with with the fact that you lose so many of the talented members of the roster from the quarterback, Joe Burrow, who had all these records, 
to Jefferson, who had 101 catch performance this year in college. Then you look at uh, uh, the offensive personnel, offensive line personnel of guys like Cushenberry, defensive uh, people like uh, Chase on and uh, Michael Divinity, those guys, uh, Patrick Queen, you know, uh, these guys are terrific talents and you lose a lot of your secondary people like Grant Dale put, et cetera. It's just, it, it gets hard. But like I said, this is what happens when you win national championships. People are going to come and ravage your team and boy, did they take a lot of time. I did not expect Munez to be a guy that leave, but I know Brady would ultimately end up leaving. I knew Dave Aranda would leave at some point. And that coach has to fig- figure out a how to remap, remap his staff. Of course, it was a rumor uh, that Bo Pelini was possibly coming back as a defensive coordinator. That did not happen. Bo Pelini came out and said that wasn't the truth. That would have been fire. I wouldn't lie to you. If they, Bo Pelini did eventually take the defensive coordinator job back with LSU, that would have been awesome. Perhaps we get old school with it and Ron Zook comes back. I don't know. But it's, it's that's some of the stuff that he's possibly – uh, looking at doing as well. So, man, it's just it's, it's just really awesome, man. I, I'm just true. Yeah, I tell you no lie, man. It's going to be interesting to see who's I'm, – I'm really interested to see who's going to be that coach. Now, also, let's get let's move on to the next topic of discussion. And, of course, we got – I was reading this article about ranking colleges football's toughest, uh, toughest – 10 toughest schedules in 2020. And, of course, they have – they start off the, the rankings by going 10 and down – uh, Georgia Bulldogs, uh, they're looking at them. And Ohio Buckeyes, they're looking at them. They say Indiana, Michigan Wolverines, LSU Tigers, ranked seventh with the hardest schedule. And they schedule versus people like University of Texas at San Antonio, which are the road runners. That's where your boy Davenport comes from. Then they got games against Texas again. Rice, which is going to be in Houston. They got Ole Miss lined up there with Lane Kiffin, Nichols. And then they had at Florida, so they go back to the swamp. They're at Arkansas, which is always a difficult place for them to play. They're at home against Mississippi State, at home against Alabama, at home against South Carolina. And then they're on the road against Auburn and at Texas A&M. So very a number of potential games versus top 25 teams of five, which is something we're not used to. They call the strength of schedule of 17 and the comparisons. Uh, the paragraph breaking it down says LSU won't play its first true road game until uh, uh, October the 10th against Florida, which means there will be time for quarterback Miles Brennan to form a repartee with his pass catchers and find some semblance of a rhythm in the Tigers wide open attack. Now that is going to look without, how is it going to look without Joe Brady? No one knows, but LSU won't reinvent the wheel on the side of the ball coming off the title, ultimately win it SEC. West title and getting back to Atlanta may depend on what the Tigers can do over the final two weeks of the season against Auburn and Texas A&M, Texas, Florida, Alabama, or other big threes versus the top 25 competition. And remember, this is a situation where the Tigers will be uh, looked upon as being the the, uh, the the perennial dog. I mean, they're the national champions. They're the national champions. And for the life of me, I, I've, I've watched footage on Miles Brennan. I'm not really... You know, Miles Brennan don't do it for me. You know what I'm saying? Like you can see it in Joey Burrow in a second. You can see what he was doing. Miles Brennan's a little different. I don't know. I mean, he's a slender, slender kid. He was able to, uh, you know, he's a smart kid. He has a strong arm. But I don't know him in terms of commanding the team. Do we have that leadership ability? Of course, there are guys like Finley from Pachatula. There's Max Johnson there as well. So this will be a competition for it. But everybody's looking at Brennan. To finally seize it. Now, of course, Kevin says, like Kevin, big ups to school. But Kevin, he says, if Jamar Chase got to be the saint, got to be a saint next year, would be awesome. That'd be really awesome too. I think he'll be a top ten target coming out next year if he can somehow have a, a nine. I don't know if he'll be close to it because we don't know exactly how LSU's offense is going to translate. You know what I mean? How is the LSU offense going to look? Move, be moving forward with Miles Brennan at the helm. Both of the passing game coordinators and the assistant Munoz and Brady are both gone. Ern Smeager, however, is still there. But the uh, Coach O is definitely going to uh, retain that offense. Why would you not? Ern Smeager knows about the offense. He ran the offense. They know about it. They could really be an uh, interesting, uh, add extra, extra interesting quirk to it. Now, I remember prior to 
uh, them running this style of offense with Joe Brady, he gave them a crash course on it. And truth be told, they should be able to implement this offense. They should be able to run this offense. I don't know how well without them, but it does open up some questions about what needs to happen in terms of uh, uh, how the, how LSU's offense will look moving forward. And man, it, we just going to have to wait and see, man, because I have absolutely no, no idea. That is the really big question. Now, they have the talent to operate it, no doubt about it, but can Brennan do it? And limited action for LSU this past season, he did admirably. You know, but of course it was designed for Joe Burrow and not Miles Brennan. Do Coach O turn around and say to Miles Brennan, okay, what do you like to do? What is what are you comfortable with doing? And provide him the running game. They still have the wide receiver weapons. And of course the LSU D will be fine on the defensive side of the ball. I'm never worried about the defensive side or concerned about the defensive side of the ball for the LSU uh, fight Tigers. Never. Because they'll find the right collection. They'll find the right collection of people uh, to replace the DC and the defensive line coach who, who left. However, you notice that Coach O did not let the defensive backs coach go from DBU. He did not let them go. He gave the man an extension and kept him. <laughs> and the defensive line coach, he let him go. Of course, Dave Aranda was the highest paid assistant in the game. He, I don't know what you could have offered, but I knew they could have offered Brady some money to stay, but ultimately they didn't wrestle with him to go to Carolina or Munez. You know, when Munez left, they didn't wrestle with him. So obviously Coach O seen all this all seen all this happening and he's gonna make the the right moves to kind of replenish the team from an offensive standpoint and bring guys here that can uh is 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 from a coaching standpoint that can help the team continue moving forward because no doubt about it, they're gonna be coming at LSU this year. And they had coaching hires in the SEC, guys like Mike Leach for Mississippi State. Uh, Lane Kiffin is there as well. So a lot of turnover in SEC because they have their sights squarely focused, squarely focused upon the national champion LSU Tigers. And boy, it sounds good to even say that. I mean, straight up, the national champion LSU Tigers. Big deal, big, big deal for the, the Tigers. Now, looking at some of the draft picks we talked about, the defensive line prospect that Dave Aranda is trying to flip, the five-star player. You take a look at some of the guys that they have. Now, we know Thad Moss is leaving the team. And we're like, okay, Thad Moss, they have some interesting replacement players for him. And we went over this on a prior show. We talked about some of the recruits. But Eric Gilbert is a special tight end. Now, this guy's fantastic. I was watching footage on him from high school. This guy is definitely uh, going to come in and start right away. And I just love what he brings, man. Athleticism, catching of the ball, very difficult to bring down. And he's, it's just it's going to be awesome to watch this guy come in and do what he do. Then you also look at the, the cornerback position, the other five-star recruit that the team was able to uh, get, uh, to bring in. And his name is er, uh, Elias Ricks, who is a cornerback, six-foot-two cornerback, six-foot-two, five-star recruit, six-two, one ninety. Uh, he wrote, he, what is his, his 40 times a full six. So he's not incredibly fast, but he's committed to the team out of uh, Florida. And man, this kid will be something special. You put him next to a guy like, like uh, Michael Stingley Jr. And the future is bright in the secondary for this team. Of course, we lose Del Pitt, but there are a few other options as well. We went over this before when we broke down. Uh, and, and was talking exclusively about what the Tigers look like moving forward. But man, man, what can I tell you? What can I tell you? This is going to be a very special, very special season coming up uh, to the um, for the LSU Tigers. Now to make mention of it, Dennis Johnson was the defensive line coach who says he's going to Baylor to, jo to play with Dave Aranda. That's no surprise right there. And I know Coach O will definitely bring the right of replacements in here. But man, I, I'll tell you, man, this team, this next, this this recruiting class that Coach O was able to put together for this upcoming year, the 2020 recruits, going to be something special. Jacqueline Roy and Kashawn Boot and Philip Webb. Some of these guys are span or special talents that should assimilate well with this team. I'm just saying, man. I'm looking at. It and I'm saying, boy. I'm just excited to see uh, what's going to happen with LSU moving forward. Now, like I said, there are several quarterbacks on this team. Uh, we don't know exactly how. We know Miles Brennan is the head dude with Burrow going. But, man, you know, we just have to watch and see just how it, how it plays. But they, they they loaded with running backs, loaded with wide receivers. 
like I said, you're looking at Eric Gilbert would be the replacement for uh, Thad Moss. And then they, they'll be fine offensively speaking. Defensively speaking, they'll they'll replenish the supply. Secondary is still going to be good. But you look for your assistance. Where do Coach O go for assistance? Do he go into his team? Do he go and find guys from other teams? So we should start hearing more and more news about Coach O signing uh, more people to fill his, sa- his staff uh, moving ahead. So that's some of the stuff there. Kevin saying, uh, LSU got to get back in gear. Off-season workout starting in April. Boy, it's a quick turnaround, isn't it? It's going to be April before you know it. Uh, Kevin says, Q, hey, Q, you're going to cover LSU's men's basketball team this year. They can make a run in the tournament. I think they're on the run right now. They've won like eight straight, I think, so far. The men, have, I've been watching them play, and they're not as explosive as they were last year. They they started out the season kind of struggling a bit, but I'm really high on Skylar Mays. I'm high on Javante Smart. I watch their games when I can. You know, I got a kind of a busy schedule. and But I am watching those guys play, man. And I think they won like seven games or something like that. No, I, I, okay, hold on. I'm, let me look it up right quick. Pull it up here. But I, I know, I think last time I checked it was like six or, six or seven. No, it's eight. They got the eight consecutive win. They came from behind and won. So I'm watching them. And that's another thing with LSU. It puts a pressure like LSU baseball has always been good. They're always up there. The football team fell off, but now the football team is the biggest thing they have. They're back. And, of course, recently they were able to kind of re-energize the basketball aspect. So I got to give the athletic director a lot of credit for being serious enough to go in and, and get all of these really good coaches that LSU have in this athletic system. And you're seeing success in the football, you have a national championship there. That can only breed and metastasize throughout the campus that catch on with the basketball team and the baseball team, that 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 championship mystique, that energy. But, yeah, the, bat, the men are on an eight-game winning streak, and I'm that's that's pretty good. I think they can make a run, no doubt about it. They play really well. I don't see them as, as, as their different-looking team than last year's team with Tremont Waters and – but let's. I, I'm. I'll be interested in see how they how they do. We might do it, Kev. We might add stick in there, uh, and and drop in on them for the tournament times because I do follow those guys too. I think they're doing a terrific job. We talked a little basketball before uh, on the Tough Tiger Talk as well. But you know, football is the mainstay, uh, the glue. So thanks for that question, buddy. Uh, but yeah, man, this is this this is a really great year. We're gonna keep following along with this news about Coach O. Uh, but Man, I tell you what, you take a look at some of the things they've been doing, man. You know, in terms of uh, how, I mean, just how the, the how they just taking a staff away. I'm like, God, Lee, damn, this LSU's just it's just to get no room for no mistake. So many defensive coaches, uh, you know, and now they're trying to flip their players and Coach O just moving around the country, uh, going to see talented players as well and he keeps recruiting because that's what he's doing right now he's recruiting talent looking to bring guys in to keep going but I don't know so much about whether or not Miles Brennan's the dude but if anybody can whip him into shape it's Coach O and we just have to keep keep on moving ahead and looking at it ran by Joy Burrow I know it was operating exclusively for Joy Burrow but with him gone with him out of there you know, you're going to have to kind of move it around for Miles. I don't even know if Miles Brennan might be that dude. I'm not certain, man. It's a lot of questions as far as that's concerned that we just have to keep a, a eye on. But, man, I tell you what, it has been a fantastic season. I'm still basting in the glow of those guys winning the national championship unlike before. And I know Mozzie, he couldn't be on the show tonight. But, man, I tell you what, he was really ecstatic, too, about LSU. We knew going in that they had a buzzsaw that nobody could deal with this team. But also the fallback of it at the other side, that's the beautiful part. The bad part is, of course, when you do win every damn thing, they come in, they snatch up all your coaches, they come and snatch, try to snatch your players. And, of course, you lose a lot of guys to the pros, which happens every year at LSU. A lot of the really good ones ultimately end up leaving going pro. And it's just one of those fascinating stories that LSU just has to keep it going. So, in my opinion, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you think they can continue to trend? It's hard to kind of pick that, to kind of look at that, because I'm I'm not a guy that believes in Miles Brennan. I'm sorry, I don't. Kevin says all the pieces are in place. Whoever the QB will be next year 
they can't lose the games. That's right. This is a tough schedule coming up. Games back in the in uh, the swamp. Games in in West uh, in uh, Texas A and M. It'll be a difficult schedule indeed. We just got to bring it, man. Like we did before. Whoever quarter may be quarterback may be. We got to bring that running game, that defense, make smart decisions, and we would be fine. We'll see, man. We'll see. But I like to thank all y'all for joining us on Tiger Talk today. Kevin says if Thad Moss is there for the Saints in the first round, snatch him. I don't know in the first round, but he might be there in the third round. He might not be the first tight end come off the board. There are several others that's pretty productive, more productive than him if you can think about it. But anyway, thank y'all for joining us on Tough Tiger Talk today. Subscribe, like, and share. Appreciate you. Peace. Go Tigers, man. National champions. That's right. National champions. I love that. Love the sound of that. <laughs> Peace out, fam. HomeBistro.com Freshly prepared, home-delivered, restaurant-quality gourmet meals delivered straight to your home. Choose from over 50-plus gourmet meal options cooked by world-class chefs and delivered frozen, ready to eat within minutes and no commit. Welcome to the one-shop gourmet food delivery specialized in affordable options to eat right and feel great. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Every ingredient is hand-picked to the highest standard. And why you should buy from home Homebistro.com, restaurant quality made with natural ingredients delivered right to your door. Overnight shopping is available. Diabetic, paleo, heart health, and vegetarian options to eat during business since 1999. Courteous, knowledgeable, and professional support. Complete PCI compliant SSL security ordering and great meals. Choose from some of my favorite dishes. The Mediterranean chicken with orange honey sauce, the charbroiled chicken romesco, or the grilled chicken breast with sweet and spicy vegetables. No matter what you choose, you can't lose with HomeBistro.com. Eat great, feel good, and save some money with HomeBistro.com. Hit the link in the description section below for more information. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is the Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. The Who That Daily dot com. That's right. The Who That Daily dot com. Your one stop shop for everything New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelicans, LSU Tigers, and even the top flight boxing news. So if you're a Who That and you're looking for a place to stay up on your team, the Who That Daily dot com is your site. The Who That Daily dot com for the sport Who That in all of us. Embrace Pet Insurance is more than just pet insurance. Embrace Pet Insurance promises to provide genuine support and certainty when your pet needed the most. With personalized accident and illness policies, compassionate customer care, 24-7 access to veterinary professionals, flexible wellness plans, timely claims processing, and online customer portals, their values is what makes them embrace. So when selecting a pet insurance company as a partner in your pet's care, you deserve a company that has your pet best interest at heart. Get top rated and review coverage for your pet today. Up to 90% back on bills at any vet. Total protection, pet insurance, and wellness and dependable claims payments. Get the top rated and review coverage for your pet today. Go to EmbracePetInsurance.com That's EmbracePetInsurance.com Check the link in the description section below. Are you a boxing fan? Check out Ring Kings Boxing only on the PRO Media Network.